Hi, Patrick Fulop here at Effective Martial Arts HQ. In this lesson, an introduction to grappling. How to improve faster by understanding the hierarchy of the four basic positions, as well as your basic offensive and defensive strategy in each situation. All right, so the four main situations we're gonna explore in this video are the guard, side control, full mount, as well as back control. Now we're gonna look at what to do in each situation, offensively and defensively, what are the main attacks that you can do and the main escapes. And we're gonna have a more detailed video coming up with more detailed techniques and strategies in each one of those situations. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel right now. Now in terms of prerequisites, you should already be comfortable with the white belt grappling basics that we explored in a playlist on our channel already. So make sure you're comfortable with those basic body movements and that will make the application of these techniques and your transitions between those positions much more efficient and effective. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First situation we're going to explore is the guard. All right, so the guard refers to the general situation where I have my legs in between her and I. So when you have your legs to protect yourself, there's many different types of guards. They can be classified in these general categories, which are open guard when there's little to no contact between us. I can have some form of grips as well in open guard, grips on their legs here, can have the leg wrapped on one side here. On the other side, these would be De La Riva guards. We can also be in a form of half guard as well if she's on her knees and I have one of her legs control. Again, there's many different variations of half guard. When we have one leg control, that's half guard. And there's also close guard when I have both my legs wrapped around her waist and I'm controlling her body like so. These are generally, I would be in the defensive position in this situation. So it's generally preferable to be on top in the guard situation, but on the bottom, you can still get a lot of good offensive movements going as well. The last category of guards will be the turtle position or turtle guard. Now this is a little bit more advanced, but if I can be here on my knees, sometimes I have control of one of her legs. I can get some attacks going from here, but she can also attack me here with some front headlocks. Different situations will play out in the turtle position. We're gonna explore that in more detail in a future video. Now, as I said, it's generally preferable, in grappling in general, it's preferable to be on top and in the guard in particular as well especially when strikes are involved. And this is what we do here at Effective Martial Arts, one curriculum for striking, wrestling, and grappling. And in each situation, we strive to consider all the eventualities that can happen in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Basically, we create a curriculum and a belt system for MMA. So in the guard situation, I add a mat as a disadvantage, especially when strikes are involved, because I have to bolt in and she has gravity on her side. So if she attacks with strikes, I am at a disadvantage in this case. Now I can also attack with strikes here, specifically with my feet. If I clear the grips here, I can go up kicks over here. If I'm in the seated position, I can attack your legs with kicks over here. And so in general, my main strategy from the bottom guard situation will be to escape and get up to my feet. So I can use the up kick to create space here and get up using a technical stand up, which we saw in detail in previous videos. If we have more of a close contact situation, the more extreme case would be the close guard situation. I'm gonna have to disengage from here and create space. Here she'll keep on applying the pressure. I wanna keep space, keep in, having my frames here and eventually getting to my standing position. So that'll be my primary objective from bottom guard, getting up. But as you get more comfortable in the grappling range, you also wanna get an offensive strategy going on from the bottom. So your offense from the bottom can be striking base, like we said, stomp kick or up kick will be the main ones. But it can also be grappling based, and that always starts with grips. So I can start grabbing here her hands. If I can get control of her upper body, I can get some submissions going. I can grab her feet with my hands. I can hook her legs with my feet. So any types of grips that I can get will lead me either to a sweep where I can start making her fall over here, or a submission, which would be getting control of one of her limbs or her neck to get a submission, which would be either a jolt lock or a strangle. From the top, my main strategy also, I can use strikes to my advantage, especially in this case since I have gravity on my side. So I wanna get some form of control, protect myself, and strike here to the body or to the face. And I wanna prevent the attacks coming at the same time. This will also be possible in the half guard situation over here. I can get control of her wrist, also start doing my attacks that are striking based. And in the close guard, that's possible as well. 
chest control on, on me over here, over the hips. I want to protect against those submissions because she will be attacking me. But I can also attack with elbows or punches to the body or to the face. Now, she can also attack me in this situation. So, it's just eventually close guard. I'm going to want to disengage from this situation here. Get uh, some frames in place. And the other thing that you want to do from top guard, combined with the strikes, is to go for a pass. So, if she's on top now, the pass will always happen the same way. It'll start most likely with grips and with distance and angle. So I could be seated over here. She could go to the side, either side, and start getting an angle on me here. Obviously, I don't want to let that happen. So as she's going to the side here, starting to get an angle, I'm going to follow her, keep her in front of me, try to fight her grips as well. So I don't want to let her control me. I want to get an offensive game going as well. I'm going to control her leg. Eventually, if she clears that frame, she can start getting around it and I'll get to a more dominant position. So, once she clears the legs, now we get into another situation, which is the side control situation. So, side control situation, there's many variations of it. When she has the full chest-to-chest -chest connection over here and she's cleared my arms, that's a full side control situation. But there's also a variation that is the knee on belly situation where he has a shin across my hips over here. And this will be a knee on belly position. She has good control here off of my hips and it's hard for me to move. So she has a more dominant position in this case. It could also be a north-south situation where we go inverted like so. And now again, I'm controlled. She controls my hips, she controls my posture with the head. So I'm gonna fight, have to fight my way out of this. But the most common variation is the side control where she is perpendicular to me. Now here, it's not time for me to attack. I'm in a very defensive position in this case. And she is the offensive grappler in this case as well. So again, my only goal will be to escape. There are some attacks I can do from here, but they're very limited. So my goal will be to create space with my hips and start getting my legs back in place and eventually re-guarding, getting my legs back in between her and I. Obviously she doesn't want to let that happen, so she wants to stay in the side control position and negate my attempts at escaping. So stabilizing will be her first objective. Now she can also get her attacks going as well from here when she stabilized the position. So striking base, beat down position, I want to protect myself, free my arm, eventually get it back in front of me, get my frames back in front of me here so I can defend with my arms. She can also get submissions going from this position as well. Typically on the far arm, those will be the most common ones. So Americana here, getting a shoulder lock. And she can also transition to more dominant positions Namely, the full mount transition will be the most common, getting a knee across the belly and getting now fully across my body. So this will be the full mount position. In this case, I am in a little bit more trouble now than previously, mainly because her strikes now have more potential power than before. Because she has elevation, she can come down with her whole body weight and strike me here. So I want to be mindful of that and really protect myself from those strikes. So keeping my head off the ground, chin tucked, and my hands protecting myself. And I also need to goaltend the possibility of submissions at the same time. So that's why it's very important to have my elbows tight. And again, my main objective in this situation will really be to escape as soon as possible. In order to do that, again, it's all on the hips, using the bridge and the shrimp that we've seen before and trying to regain that elbow to knee connection here by putting my body in a ball. And from there, I can regain the position of variations of the guard and start escaping the position from here. So from the full mount position, again, I want to go to the strikes. Strikes are coming, I want to protect myself here. I can also gain control of her body and protect myself against strikes from here. She can break that by doing a cross face on me and getting back on the offensive. I want to protect against the strikes and protect against the submissions as well. Because the moment my elbow starts opening up, she can start attacking that arm. And now I need to fight my way out of an arm bar. So we're going to see that more in detail, all the layers of attack and defense of the arm bar. So stay tuned and subscribe to our channel if you are not already, if you don't want to miss that video. Moving on, the last situation we're going to explore is the back control situation. Now again, that can happen many ways. You can get the back control from any one of the other positions. But the simplest illustration would be if I make the mistake of start exposing my back, she can transition behind me, start getting a chest to back connection, and then start taking control of my back over here. So let's turn around here facing the camera. So now, if she has the back control, she wants her chest connected to my back. She wants control of my upper body by having what we call a seat belt with her arms over here. She has my bottom shoulder control. Her head is very close to my head as well. So it's controlling the position of my head. And she wants lower body control at the same time as well. So she's controlling my hips. And this is a great illustration of the concept of access or the principle of access, meaning that all my escapes will have to do with 
resetting my access to her. So I basically want to face her. So we've seen this, this before, we can see it in more detail in the uh, back control escape video, but if I can free my head somehow and start turning and facing her, this will be ameliorate my position. I can also do so by sliding out over here, getting my head free here. So I get my head to the mat and start facing her over here. So she's gonna need to prevent that and then she transition. She can get back to the full mount, which is also equally cool for her. So in terms of fighting when strikes are involved, back control and full mount are really on par in terms of the offensive opportunities. But the back control offers a unique opportunity to execute the most high percentage submission in all of martial arts, which is the rear naked strangle. So if she can isolate an arm perhaps, and start getting under my chin over here, and then eventually locking her arms in a figure four. This is a very high percentage choke that's hard to defend from here because I am purely defensive in this situation. So again, my main objective is just to escape. Her objective will be to stabilize this position and go on the offense. With a choke, she can also strike in this situation. She has a good lower body control here, and she has the hands under control. She can eventually strike on this side here, so I need to protect myself. And the other submission that's pretty high percentage as well from the back is transitioning to an arm bar. So if she goes on the other side of my head here, so I can let the leg across, breaking my grip, she can break my arm from there. So this is a quick overview of the four main positions. Now, how to navigate from each. Definitely, it starts in the guard, then you are worst off when you're in bottom side control, and then bottom full mount and bottom back control are pretty much equally as bad in the bottom position. From the top perspective, when you are in the top guard, you definitely have a lot of offensive opportunities, but you have to be careful because the person on the bottom can still attack you. And then when you get to side control, you're in a better position, and full mount back control, you have a lot more offensive opportunities. So you definitely want to be able to maintain those positions if you have gotten there. Now stay tuned because we will have a detailed tutorial coming up for each one of those situations. So the guard, basic guard passing and retention, as well as the offense and defense in that situation. Side control, full mount, back control. We're gonna study the most high percentage escapes in each one of those situations, as well as the most important offensive movements for stabilization, as well as attacks, striking and grappling based. Now more importantly, we're also gonna expand on the little known concept of using progressive resistance in order to help you acquire the skills of making those techniques work in a real situation. So more on this later as well as we're gonna expand on the five basic principles of fighting, applied not only to grappling, but also to our other ranges of hand-to-hand -hand combat, which are wrestling and striking. So once again, this is what we do here at Effective Martial Arts in our school and on our channel. We study all aspects of hand-to-hand -hand combat. We basically created a curriculum and belt system for MMA that encompasses striking, wrestling, and grappling. So if you haven't already, subscribe right now. And if you are a returning subscriber, good job for doing your study time, staying tuned to our videos, and acquiring the knowledge that will help you improve faster. And lastly, if you've enjoyed this video, click the like button right now. If there's any particular aspect of this lesson that you've enjoyed or found particularly helpful, let us know in the comments below. If you have any questions, let us know as well. We'll be happy to help. So as always, it's been a real pleasure doing this video for you. Excited about the next ones coming soon. Signing off, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ in Pointe Claire, West Island, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Thank you very much for watching. Practice well.